Hello everyone, here is Anna and welcome to my channel. Today we have a very exciting topic, as you may have already guessed from the title of this video, I'm going to talk about black female classical composers. If you like the idea of this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment. And also it will be really helpful if you subscribe to my channel and put the notification button. And now let's get started! So, you know, starting from the first female composer we know, Hildegard, in the 12th century, up to the present day, women have made a significant contribution uh, to classical music, which has often been overlooked. Across Europe, 97.6% um, of classical music performed in the last three seasons was um, written by men, leaving a paltry 2.3% written by women. And, um, you know, from this 2.3%, I think it would be quite shocking to realize which percentage was written by black women. And, of course, it's not because they're not existing. I myself did not know any black female composer before I started uh, doing a research on this topic. Surprisingly for myself, I found a ton of information. Um, about black female composers and I listen to lots and lots of beautiful music pieces and I'm happy to share some information with you and um, on the first place simply inspire you to do your own research, to listen to this music and to play it. So, if you have ever googled black female composers or if you have educated yourself about the topic, I guess it won't be a surprise for you that I will start with Florent Price. On the website dedicated to her that I will of course link down below, um, I learned that she was in fact the first um, African-American female composer that gained um, international status. Born in Little Rock, Arkansas in 1887, Price won the first prize in the Wanamaker competition with her symphony in E minor and as a result became the first female composer of African descent to have a symphonic work performed by major national symphony orchestra. Little of her piano music has been recorded, though recently approximately five hours of music for solo piano piano duets were discovered in a home that she once owned and had been abandoned after having been lost for over 30 years in her home. Although this premiere brought an instant recognition to Florence Price, the success of a composer was not meant to be hers. As it was written in Women's Voices for Change, she would continue to wage an uphill battle, a battle much larger than any war that pure talent and musical skill could win. It was a battle in which the nation was embroiled, a dangerous manage of segregation, Jim Crow laws, entrenched racism and sexism. I won't tell you the whole biography of her, you can just read it on her website, but there was one fact that really stood up to me when I read it. So she finished her high school at the age of 14 and she left um, Little Rock in 1904 to study uh, in the New England Conservatory and she finished it in two years and she followed her mom's advice to um, tell about herself as um, being of Mexican's origin and yes, when she finished uh, her bachelor degree in two years, she was the only one of 2,000 students to pursue a double major, organ and piano performance. I think that's really crazy, isn't it? If you haven't heard anything um, of her music yet, I would recommend to take a look at her famous Symphony No. 1, a proper, decent and absolutely beautiful um, symphony. From her piano music, even though I haven't listened honestly to like five hours of her piano music, um, I, I don't even know if it's recorded honestly, but anyways, there was one a piano piece that really uh, stood up for me and um, it's called Sketches in Sepia. I find her music 
really interesting like there is this kind of a special warm feeling that actually like hugs you when you listen to it it's very interesting and I don't know what do you hear in this music but I think I hear some kind of interesting mix of like African melodies and uh, harmonies and also some um, maybe American country music um, motifs it's it's really interesting for me the next composer I'm going to talk about is Margaret Bronze who was actually a student of Florence Price. So the first piece that was written by Margaret um, was called uh, Marquette Street Blues and she wrote it when she was only five years old. Um, her first piano teacher was her mother, but she also received uh, lessons with uh, Florence Price when she was still in school. As a singer, she was the first black soloist to perform with the Chicago Symphony at the Chicago's World's Fair in 1933. She had a good career as a pianist after she received her master's degree and even performed Florent Price's Piano Concerto in 1934. During this time, she became such a good composer that when she showed Nadia Boulanger who praise the Negro Speaks of Rivers, she told her that she didn't need to study with her. In 1965, she wrote the piece Montgomery Variations for orchestra and dedicated it to Martin Luther King. To honor her, the mayor of Chicago declared the 31st January 1967 to be Margaret Bond's day. I really love a piece of Margaret that is called Trouble to Water, like it actually clicks with me somehow and I hope to perform it in the future and to include to my concert programs, but for now you can listen to a recording made by um, Samantha H, I hope I pronounce it correctly. A pianist who actually, as I um, found out from her YouTube channel, brings a lot of recognition to black female composers and I hope you will um, enjoy this piece. Definitely has a lot of like um, jazz rhythms and harmonies and I also hear some African melodies and yeah, it's just a really interesting uh, piece. Another composer that I would like to mention here is Julia Perry. She had um, quite a tragic story. She was born in the US but traveled across Europe studying with um, world-renowned teacher and composer Nadia Boulanger in France. After that she was teaching in Florida where she also composed her Vivaldi-inspired Requiem for Orchestra. One of her most famous pieces is called Stabat Mater. She later went on to teach to Atlanta University. Unfortunately, she suffered um, a stroke which left the right side of her body paralyzed, but she learned how to write with her left hand and carried on composing until her death in 1979. I found a very interesting work for orchestra of hers that is called a short piece for orchestra. It's a proper avant-garde music, I guess I can say that, and of course I will link it down below, as always. Um, but I was actually really shocked about how mature, how good and interesting this piece is. I mean, it's just a shame and a pity that we've never heard like probably thousands of such pieces, at least not here in Europe. I don't know, maybe in the US the situation is a little bit different. You can also, um, yeah, just write it in the comments if you don't, if you know something about that. But definitely in Europe we don't hear any of these pieces. And of course I would also like to mention a few um, contemporary black female composers. I chose two names, but there is so much more of them. Luckily it's getting possible to bring more diversity into the world of classical music, but I think there is still a long way to go. Quite a famous uh, composer living these days is Erilyn Wallen. I just hope that I pronounce her name correctly and sorry if I don't. She has her roots in Belize and in 1998 became the first black woman to have her work performed at the BBC Proms. Commenting on this in The Guardian, she said, It feels embarrassing to have to draw attention to the fact that there are still so few people of color in the classical music industry. 
I actually totally agree with that. What is really interesting about her is that she um, works both on classical music, like on avant-garde classical music and on popular songwriting. And she worked with such artists as, for example, Sting and Björk, which I think is just really amazing. And to end this video, I would like to mention Hannah Kendall. I really liked her piano piece that is called Processional. It's like real classical contemporary music, maybe difficult to listen to if you're not really into contemporary music, but I would still recommend just, you know, to take a look and to get to know it. I think it's very well written. And just a little bit about Hannah. She is actually a composer from the UK. She has featured on BBC Radio and won a Women of the Future Award for Arts and Culture. And her music has been performed by a whole host of uh, UK professional groups, including London Philharmonic and BBC Singers. So I guess that's it for today. As I said, I could only name a few female black composers um, from the classical music world in this video but there are so many more of them and I think it's really important that we continue educating ourselves on this topic and on the first place that we listen to this music, that we perform this music, that we bring this music to, uh, to the halls and to inspire more and more young female composers from all around the world to, um, to compose, like to, to work, to create something. So yes, if you like this video, again, please um, give it a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, put a notification button, it's all highly appreciated. So yes, that's it for today and see you next time. Bye!